operator, how can I help? Hi, um, I'm not actually too sure how. Um, I'm, I'm having some issues with my, my parents are down in Pariora and on the South Island and I'm calling from Auckland. Yes. Um, they've, they've been getting harassed and I'm wondering who I can talk to to... I will put you through to our reporting line. Okay. Uh, and they can take the details and they can assess if you need assistance now or they will just assign an officer for you. Okay? Sure, thank you. I'll put you through now. call centre. If someone's life is in danger, a physical assault is taking place, or offenders are committing a crime or are still in the area, please hang up and call 111. For all other inquiries, please stay on the line and we'll be with you shortly. Can I help? Hi, how are you? Um, I've had a dis couple of disturbing phone calls from my mother of late in the last couple of days, and they're down in Pariora, south of Timaru. Yeah. Um, I'm up in Auckland, which is why I'm calling you guys. I'm kind of uncertain as to what to do. Um, but my mum and dad are like 65, 66. Dad suffers diabetes. He's got health issues. Um, and... The reason I mention that is because last night um, they had a yet unnamed um, police constable show up on their private property and threaten to arrest my father. Obviously this has given me concern is because he's also got heart issues and the thought of something stressful like that could easily make him keel over, which I don't want to happen. Well, he was, um, what, what, what's been going on basically over the last 10 years, my father has had three grandsons of my brothers um, go through the child, youth and family system. And last, or well, yesterday, um, I think it was, he, had, he was speaking quite calmly to a lady by the name of Marie Hargaden and from SIFS in Tamaru. And um, I think he, he's, what he said is uh, something to the, to the likes of, and of course this is only third hand information, but he said something to the likes of there's going to be an opening in the social welfare, you know, there's going to be an, an, another job opening coming up because he's basically, he's had enough and he wants somebody's, you know, job to be fired. It's not a threatening to kill or anything like that, but however this constable, whoever he is, he's a red-headed constable who's worked for the Waimati police station for the last eight years and I really would like to know his name. Um, has showed up at quarter to eight last night and threatened to arrest him. Now, I'm of, of the understanding that if someone's going to get arrested and the police show up on your doorstep, you're arrested. There is no ifs. So to me, that's more of a threat from the police to my parents. So what can be done? What reassurances can I have that my parents aren't going to get a knock on the door at, say, 11 o'clock at night and my father be arrested. Okay, hang on. What was your name, sorry? Well, I'm commonly known as Mark. And your surname? Well, my family name is... That's my natural person's name. What do you mean your natural person's name? Well, I'm a man. I don't have a name. I represent in a lawful society as a natural person, and I have a legal person, which is a capitus diminutio maxima. But if you're not legally trained, I don't expect you to understand what I'm saying. Right, and what's your address? <laughs> I, I, 
live everywhere. Um, my postal address is... I do. Is uh, and what's your parents' address? My parents' address is number. Now this this constable, whoever he is, showed up at quarter to eight last night. I don't think that's an acceptable time to be paying an elderly couple a visit, especially when all of this has gone on during the daytime. Is there a reason why they would get a visit at that time of night? Um, details. So I'm not going to make any sort of comment as to what's reasonable or not about what a police officer's done without knowing well, constable. any kind of issues around, you know, any of the details around the issues. Well, I, I would just would have thought, you know, for, for, for a constable to show up on somebody's private property and, and uh, to arrest somebody, they're going to do it. Are that or he's just investigating. And if he's investigating, my father's of no obligation whatsoever to, to answer any questions. You know, you have the right to remain silent, or it will be used against you. Is that not correct? It's if you're under arrest, sir. Or even being questioned. Well, again, I'm not going to make any sort of comment as to why a police officer was or wasn't there. Okay, well, there was an allegation of Dad threatening somebody. No names were mentioned. No, no threats were mentioned other than... Someone How do you know that no threats were mentioned if you weren't involved in the conversation that information's all third hand to you? Because I've, I've spent an hour and a half, two hours talking to my parents over this. Just as I'm sure any constable would. So how, how am I not, should I not believe what they're saying? It, well, put it this way, if there's an allegation... No, I wasn't if, involved it, it, in any of the conversations. Exactly. So again, I'm not going to make any sort of comment. Okay, so if this lady, Marie Hargaden, from Timaru Child, Youth and Family, is making an allegation against my father, should she not have made a, an affidavit of truth, a statement of truth, and have it signed, so it can be verified and cross-referenced and cross-examined in the court of record? Well, if she's made a complaint. Well, if she's made a complaint, then a statement would have been taken from her. Okay. So if that statement had been made, then surely my father would have been arrested? Not necessarily. Okay. I'm not just going to randomly walk up to somebody and arrest them without some sort of Reasonable. contact with that person first to get their side of the story. Okay. He's, he seemed to have... Um, I, I, I was told that the officer made a comment of asking my father if he had a problem with men in uniform. I'm wondering what that has to do with a harassment allegation. Well, again, sir, I'm not making any sort of comment as to what... Or what the police officer well, did or did not okay. say. Well, I wasn't there, I'm not involved okay. in the situation and I'm not going to make that sort of comment. Well, can I find out the name or the QID number or whatever of the constable that was involved in the situation so I can ask him directly? You would need to go into a police station to get that. Why can I not get it off of you on the phone? Because I can't verify your identity over the phone, sir. Well, how am I to verify his identity unless I go to YMADI? You can go to our police station yeah. with some identification. Why would I need to identify myself with a person just to find out information about it, 
a man that's threatened my father. Okay, so you're, you're talking about an issue that's being investigated by the police. I'm talking about I'm talking about, so a, a, I'm, I'm talking about a constable that showed up on my parents' private property and threatened to arrest them, causing them alarm, distress, and harassment. So that's a crime, is it not? Is it not a I'm crime not... to threaten somebody with unlawful detention or kidnapping? Is that not a crime? You're saying that the police officer threatened to kidnap your father. He's threatened to arrest my father without yeah, just, again, without sir, just cause. Without just cause. I'm not making any that... sort of comment as to what the police officer did or did not say at your father's address. He's threatened to I arrest him. I have no him. idea what was said. I was not involved in the conversation, I, I, and I'm not going to be commenting on it. I'm not saying that you are involved in the conversation. Well, you're asking me to make comments on it, sir. I'm not. I'm trying to figure out the standard operating procedure of what a police officer is allowed or not allowed to do. And again, without knowing that, without being there and without knowing the situation and what the circumstances were, I'm not making any sort of comment as to what did or did not happen there. So it depends on the situation. Every situation is different. Would. Okay. So, just so I'm clear, for someone to be arrested, they have to commit a crime. I'm not getting into any sort of conversation as to what is necessary for somebody to be arrested to. Well, it, 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 sorry, it really needs to be clarified because if, if a man's going to show up and threaten to arrest my father, it should be clarified, should it not? What should be clarified? Why he is supposedly going to have or be arrested? Again, sir, I don't know. I don't know the circumstances of what okay. was happening there at the time. I was not there. Okay, if you were going to arrest to some... with this case, if and you... I'm not making any sort of comments as to what was or was not said. I find everything rather hostile right now. I'm just trying to find out some answers. And you're yeah, just not, you're not commenting at all. You're asking me to make comments on a situation that I'm not involved in. I have no... Okay. Well, can I put, pose a hypothetical? If you were to arrest somebody, would you not need reasonable suspicion or a verifiable claim to do so? Well, I'm not a police officer, so I'm not going to be arresting anybody. So you can't commit, a, you can't perform a citizen's arrest then? I wouldn't perform any kind of citizen's arrest, sir. I would leave it up to police to do that. Oh, well, there's the fault. Everybody has the right to arrest somebody. Leaving it up to the police is the go problem. around arresting people? Well, police shouldn't go around on private property and threaten to arrest somebody without just cause. And to me, if he was going to arrest him, he would have just shown up and arrested my father to do anything. But you weren't there, sir, and you don't know what that police officer was there to do. So he was there to, investi he was what, what, there to investigate the allegations made against my father. So... What right does he have to warn or threaten my father without just reason? If my fa if, if he shows up tonight, arrests my father at 11 o'clock or whatever in the middle of the night, and pulls him out of bed, he has a heart attack and drops dead, who do I hold liable for that when there's no verifiable claim? How do you know there's no verifiable claim? Or, okay, supposing... I'm not involved supposing, in the situation, sir. How do you know what is going on and what's not going on? Because I believe what my father and mother have told me. They tell me a man dressed in a police uniform walks into their house while Dad's making pickle and tries to find out information from my father to which he got no responses from. He tried to, find, he tried to get my father to identify himself, give birth details, all that sort of thing. My father's on his own private property. He doesn't have to do jack to anybody. And if that police officer had a reason to arrest him, he would have done so. So what right does he have to show up on private property and threaten to arrest somebody? And without just cause, it is kidnapping. Unlawful detention. Kidnapping, sir. 
it, it, what else do you call moving okay, somebody so I, without I, their free I will? I what it is that you're wanting from me. What, I want what reassurances. I want to know the name of the man that showed up on my parents' private property, and I want reassurances that my vulnerable adult parents, i.e. 66 with a heart condition, is not going to be threatened or harassed at a late point in the evening when he's sound asleep in bed for something that's not substantiated, because at this point, if it was, he'd be arrested. Well, I've already told you how to get that information to. So, you, you, so by going to a police station, I'm going to find out the name of the man. What, if I show ID and act as a person within this society called New Zealand, then I go ahead and I can find out that information, can I? You can request that information, sir. I can request. I can't require, order and demand it, though. Are you aware that the word request, require and order all mean the same thing, according to a justice of the... I'm not a dictionary, sir. I don't know the difference between request, require and order. I'm not a dictionary, sir. I don't know the difference between request, require, and order. I'm not a dictionary, sir. I don't know the difference between request, require, and order. This, this conversation is 13 minutes long and it's going nowhere. And I've held for 12 minutes to get through to you. What is your point? I've been on the phone for 25 minutes. Not 13. Yeah. But you're asking the same questions over and over again, sir. Not 13. Yeah. But you're asking the same questions over and over again, sir. I and want I've to... told you I'm not making any sort of comment as to what a police officer did or did not do at an address that you were not at last night. Well, of course I wasn't. I'm in Auckland. And I would have thought that New Zealand Police, being a, a national organisation, would be able to talk from one point to another or look up on a screen and find out whatever's pending for my father. If there's any allegations against him. But you, you are aware of the Privacy Act, and you would be aware then that I would not be able to give you any information. But you... You are aware of the Privacy Act, and you would be aware then that I would not be able to give you any information over the telephone without being able to verify your identity. Of course I'm not Why aware of any privacy... Go into a police station. I am not aware of a Privacy Act. I don't understand well, any legislature whatsoever. It's written in a different language. I am not aware of a Privacy Act. I don't understand well, any legislature whatsoever. It's written in a different language. What do you mean it's written in a different language? It's written in legal jargon. It is not English. It is written in a legalese. That's why you need lawyers to represent you. Legislature is not written in English. To think okay, so well, is incorrect. The Privacy Act is pretty simple, sir. I'm not going to be giving you any information out over the telephone without being able to verify your identity. I'm not giving you I've any given you my identity. Else. I gave you my identity. I told you what my given names were. I told you what family my, I'm from. And how do I verify that over a telephone? Well, how do I verify who you are? Well, you rang me. I will put you through to our reporting line. Okay. Uh, and they can take the details and they can assess if you need assistance now or they will just assign an officer for you. Okay? Sure, thank you. Up to you through now. Well, you rang me. Yeah, I rang you for assistance and help. And I've got yes, nothing but, but static. You, sir, without being able to verify your identity over a telephone, which I cannot do, yeah. you need to go into the police station with identification. So I need to lower myself to that of a person. Instead of just being a man. You mean you need to lower yourself to that of a person? Are you aware of the difference of what a man and a person is? What's the difference between a man and a person? Man is not defined in legalese. You cannot find the legal definition of man anywhere. You will only find the legal definition of the word person. And according to the Interpretations Act 1999 section 30, a person... You're, you're quoting me the Interpretations Act of 1930. 
1999 section 30. Go and look it up at legislation.govt.nz. Well, while you're on legislation.govt.nz, look up the Privacy Act and you'll see that I'm not giving you any information over the telephone. This conversation is going nowhere and you've been told to go into the police station with identification. Okay. So, that, so that's it then? Go into the police I'm, I'm not going to get any reassurances that my parents will not be harassed, alarmed and distressed tonight while they sleep by the New Zealand police. Is that correct? Again, sir, you're asking me to give you information about a situation that's not involving you. It, it, it's, of course it's involving me. It's involving my parents. Yeah, it's involving your parents? Yeah. Yeah. So that's not true? Of course it is. You, no, I, 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 my, true. my obligations... Individual my individual obligations... Of yours. My obligations lie first and foremost to my family. Right. So go into a police station then with identification and re make any sort of request you want there. Okay. And, and what, what can I expect in return? You mean what can you expect in return? Well, if I'm supposed you to show up and... Police station with you, identification, sir. You've been told that about five times now. Yes, I have been told that five times. Yeah. And I still so that's haven't what you been. Need to do. There's and no, I we're still haven't. Continuing this conversation any longer. Why am I not getting There's reassurance from you? I can tell you over the telephone. So you can't give me any reassurances that my parents will not be trespassed upon tonight by the police in any capacity. I just want to make sure they're going to get a good night's sleep and not get woken up by the police in the middle of the night and arrested. Well, that's not my call to make, sir. Like I've said, well, whose call is it? And I am not any kind of police officer, any kind of police officer, not any kind of police officer that's involved in any kind of situation that involves your father. Then why are you so answering the police? I'm not making any sort of comment as to where or not, where, and any kind of investigation may may or not be. Okay, so then why, if, if you're not a police officer, why are you answering for the police? I don't get that. I, I expect you when I call the police... when you go to the police station, sir. Okay, fine. I'll, I'll do that. And, and what was your name, please? Sorry? My name's Sarah. Sarah, do you have a QID number? Yep, Sarah, Mike, Alpha, Echo, 80. Sarah, Mike, Alpha, Echo, 80. Okay, thank you. You have thank a you. you have a pleasant evening.